So in the last video, we talked about this identity, which is called the difference of squares, or the difference of two squares, meaning it's the difference of two perfect squares. And we always factor it in this manner. Whatever the square root of the first thing is, you put that in the front of both factors. Whatever the square root of the back term is, you put that in the back, and then you make one plus and one minus. Um, but what happens if we have the sum of two perfect squares? Um, go ahead and pause and just take a guess. What do you think it's going to be? What do you think the two factors are going to be? So some of you may have said maybe it's a plus b and another a plus b because I want b times b to give me positive b squared. That's not going to work though because I'm going to get a b plus another a b and those won't cancel out in the middle like the difference of squares did. So how is it possible to get just two terms, to have the middle cancel but to get a positive um, last term? And the answer is we're going to have to use imaginary numbers. There are no real factors that will give you this sum of two squares. Um, so it's actually very similar to the difference of two squares. You are still going to have a, b, and a, b. You're still even going to make one of them plus and one of them minus because that's how you get the same, um, you get the two middle terms to cancel. But how am I going to give these to a positive number? The answer is the imaginary unit i. All you have to do is put i's on the end of both factors. The reason this works, let me just distribute it out and show you, is we'll get a times a, which is a squared. Then we have a times negative bi, so that's negative a times bi. Then we have positive bi times a, so positive a times bi. And then I've got bi times negative bi. So positive times negative is negative. b times b is b squared. And i times i is i squared. Can you see that? Okay, yes. All right, so notice, <laughs> look, it's like Abby. Negative ABI and positive ABI cancel each other out. That's how we get rid of that middle term. I've got A squared, but how does this become a positive B squared? Well, if you remember, I squared is actually just negative one because I is the square root of negative one. And so if we square it, this just cancels and you get negative one. So I squared is just plain old negative one. So if I were to replace the i squared with a negative one times the negative b squared, negative b squared times negative one is positive b squared. And add that to the a squared, and there we have it, a squared plus b squared right here. So um, the punchline is basically, if you have the sum of two squares, you'd probably call it prime or not factorable, but if um, the problem prompts you to include complex or imaginary solutions, you factor it in this way. Um, still square root, both the first and last thing. Um, still make one factor plus and one minus, um, but just put i's on the end if it's a plus rather than a minus. For example, Let's factor this, and it says your factors may be complex. So I know that um, normally this would just be a prime expression, but since it said to go and do complex numbers or imaginary numbers, we'll factor this. So it is the sum of two perfect squares because the square root of x squared is x. So that goes in the front of both of my factors. The square root of 9 is a 3, so that goes in the back 
both of my factors. Again, like before, I'm going to make one plus and one minus, but I'm going to put I right here and I right here because it was the sum. Because again, if I were to do, if I were to multiply this out, I'd get x times x, which is x squared. I'd get x times negative, I did that, x times negative 3i is negative 3ix, and x times positive 3i is positive 3ix, and then 3i times negative 3i, that's negative 9i squared. These two cancel, getting rid of the middle term. If I replace i squared with a negative 1, negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. So that's how the i's help me get that positive 9. Let's try another one. This is the sum of two perfect squares. So I'll square root 4x to the 6th, and I'll square root the 49. The square root of 4 is 2. And if I take 6 divided by 2, I get 3. So x to the 3rd. Or another way of thinking about that is x cubed times itself gives you x to the 6th. The square root of 49 is 7. So fill those in to your two factors. 2x cubed goes in the front. 7 goes in the back make one plus and one minus, that's all exactly the same as the difference of squares. But since it was the sum of two squares, I'll put i and i. All right, one more example. Again, this is the sum of two squares because the square root of four x to the eighth, square root of four is two, and if I split this in half, that would be x to the 4th. So that goes in the front of my two factors, 2x to the 4th. The square root of 16 is 4. So that goes in the back. Make one plus, make one minus, and put i's because it was a plus sign.